Well, look at here. We got two Jersey guys in Las Vegas. Ira Thor with Ramapo head coach Chuck McBreen. Unfortunately for the six ranked Roadrunners, not leaving Las Vegas the way they had anticipated. After a, a loss to Ohio Wesleyan yesterday that you really can't do much about when a team hits 25 threes today, they led Central by 19, but couldn't put the Dutch away. Coach, what happened today? I don't know. It, it, we, we made a few substitutions in the first half, and uh, there was a key play that happened. They hit a three, and there was a foul in the lane, and uh, they ended up getting only four. They could have got five on the play, but they could, uh, got four because the kid missed one of the free throws. But it took it down from about 18 to about 14, and then they just started to chip away from there. And they had it down to seven at the half, and now it was a ball game, and then they just gave a better effort than us in the second half, we couldn't score. With eight minutes to go in the second half, we only had 12 points in the first 12 minutes of the second half. So I think we ended with 29 points in the second half, but we struggled to finish plays. Free throws, we were 12 for 23. We couldn't make a free throw. And I think that was the difference in the game because we held them to, I think, 33 or 34% from the game. Field goal percentage, you should win that game, but we didn't make the free throw today, and that really killed us. We talked about that on the broadcast. You guys in the paint, 42 to 16, 23 to 10 off of turnovers. In a lot of the stat categories, you guys were the better team. But Central was, especially after starting the game, 0 for 16. Most teams would quit in that spot, but this team had a lot of fight. You have to be impressed complimentary-wise what you saw in this Dutch squad. Without a doubt. We knew they were going to be good coming in. A lot of people that don't follow college basketball don't, don't know that their schedule might be the most difficult in the country. I mean, they played River Falls. They played Lacrosse. They played Augustana, uh, the, the uh, runner-up from last year. They also played um, Wash U. So, I mean, their schedule, I even asked Coach before the game, what possessed you to pick that kind of schedule? And he just said, I guess I'm dumb. <laughs> but uh, he played us out here. I mean, at the end of the day, he's not afraid to play any, anybody, so give him credit. Kind of like you guys at Jersey City and us, we'll play anybody. And at the end of the day, they stayed with it and kept grinding until they pulled out the victory. Our largest lead was 19, their largest lead was 6. And at the end of the day, they hung in and they pulled it out at the end. They made plays. Just to backtrack to yesterday, Ohio Wesleyan with 25 threes. That's an all-time D3 hoops. Dot com classic records, actually also a North Coast conference record. So that's how Ohio Wesleyan played yesterday. Well, what happened yesterday? I mean, you guys can only do so much to stop a team when they're shooting that well. Yeah, I agree. I mean, in the first half, in the first three minutes of the game, we guarded them, and I think they were one for five from the three. I felt good at that point. We were okay. We started the game 6 nothing, But then after that, they started hitting three at the three, and then we didn't do a good job of covering uh, Nate Axelrod, which he was able to get into the paint and then kick out the shooters, and he's, he's a heck of a player. And so because of him, guys were able to set their feet and get clean looks at it, and then in the second half, they started we were down 12 thought we were still in the game but they start the second half four for five from the three and it ballooned right to about 22 points and then the game just got away from us you've been doing this a long time have you ever seen a shooting performance like that ever never never that's the best shooting performance against us we usually have a decent uh, defensive team and we thought we'd be able to guard the three-point line uh, with them and obviously they shot it coach said their coach I spoke with him he said they've never shot it like that before uh, at all but hey Give credit to them. They made shots, and they were the better team that night. How do you guys rebound? That you're 9-1 coming into Las Vegas, and you leave for the first time ever. You've been in this tournament seven to eight years. First time you're ever leaving 0-2. How do you guys rebound? What, what message do you send to your guys with a lot of NJAC action coming up after the new year? We kind of said to them in there, bottle this feeling. We're all down. Everybody's down in the dumps. And, and see how this feels, And then, which means our work ethic when we get back on the first to practice, because we have a game on a third, it has to be at a higher level. We see what happens when teams outwork us, and that's what I felt happened in the second half today. And at the end of the day, we have to get back to the drawing board and get back to doing what we do is just working hard. And at the end of the day, if we do that, we're talented enough to get past this. If we don't do that, then this is what the result will be. I want to talk more about your squad here. Last year, a uh, top 25 team most of the year. You win the NJAC championship game on a shot that I would personally like to forget, the half-court shot against us in the, by Thomas Bonicum in the conference championship game. And then for you guys, probably a, a disappointing early exit the second round of, of the NCAAs. So you come out this year, an entire 
senior class starting lineup, a lot of experience and a lot of expectations on your shoulders. How good is this team and what are you guys capable of this year with the amount of experience that you have? You know, I, I really don't know how good it is yet because we've been tested now in three games and we didn't live up to the challenge. Um, I, I think losing Sultan Amino has hurt us and we lost Corey Sones, who was an athletic kid and an energizer off the bench. Those were our two main losses. And at the end of the day, I thought we brought in people to make up for that. But right now, you know, guys that didn't start before like Nick Stanek is now a starter and he's have to play more minutes than he had to play last year. Uh, and also at the end of the day, um, you know, there's a big, we kind of snuck up on people last year. We weren't preseason ranked uh, and all. After we beat Salisbury out here, we moved into the rankings and just kept moving up all the way up to number five last year. But this year, they we were preseason number five and the expectation was higher than ever. And right now, I think that target on our back and all has gotten the best of us right now. You know, we haven't been able to, everybody's gonna come out when you rank that high. And just the way we felt when we played Salisbury, it was five out here. We, uh, we wanted to beat them. It was real important to us to give an effort to beat them, and we did. And I think everybody that plays us, like Randolph Macon and Ohio Wesleyan and Central today, they're coming out and they want to beat us. You saw the celebration that they had after they won today. You know, you thought they won a national championship, but again, because we're six, in their, in their mind, we're beating one of the top teams in the country. And obviously, right now, we're not playing like one of the top teams we did in the first 15 minutes of the, uh, of the game. But uh, unfortunately for us, the game consists of 40 minutes. Minutes. Are the expectations too high this year with the losses you had? Right now it looks that way. It does look that way. I was hoping not, and I was hoping we had enough senior experience uh, to live up to the expectations. And that's why, for the first time in my 20 years, we went on a foreign tour to Montreal to get this team ready, get us extra games, extra practices, to take a team that we thought was possibly good enough to get to the Final Four and, and deep enough and, and get, get ourselves properly prepared. And I thought we did that, but right now you, we're not reaping the benefits of that. Now you guys have been in this tournament seven of the eight years that it's been held. By far the most of any team, men's or women's. What keeps you coming back? It's a quality run tournament. I mean, uh, Brett at Sports Tours uh, and Tim Austin, they run a great tournament out here. It's a great facility. You know, it has everything here for our kids. Uh, and also they're kind of confined to this facility on the most part. And then obviously you have Dave and Pat, yourself, quality people coming out here, doing the play-by-play -play and all. It's just a quality run tournament. I've been in uh, tournaments in Phoenix, uh, San Diego, uh, Disney, Puerto Rico, and no tournament can compare to this one. So at the end of the day, as long as they'll have us, we're going to keep coming out here if we can raise the money in order to come out here. Now, each year when you come out, you know, some teams coming for the first time will have something that they do as a, as a team. Does it get harder to kind of come up with something new to do as a team bonding activity out here? No, I mean, we kind of keep it the same. Uh, we go bowling as a team and all, and we have a great time with that. We really have a lot of fun with it. We get up in the bowling alley that's on this facility and all. A couple of guys went to uh, the, the, the go-karts. Uh, we had about 10 guys that went to this go-kart uh, thing up the road. But we, most of us, like uh, uh, 20 of us, went bowling, and we pretty much do that every year. So we, we do that, and we really enjoy our time together. And it's, it is a great bonding situation. So that's pretty much what we do as a team. Now we're going to end this interview in probably a, a new way for a lot of folks because Chuck and I have known each other for about 20 years. Him at Aramapo, myself at NJCU. And just by chance, last year, I'm leaving a show in Madison Square Garden, Bon Jovi, and who would I see on the stairs on the way down? Coach McBreen and his wife. I was with my wife, so clearly we have the same taste in music, good taste in music, by the way. So we're gonna have a little, a little fun with Coach McBreen here. He's actually seen a lot more shows than I have. How many concerts have you been to in your life, or roughly? Roughly over 100. I mean, I've seen so many different performers, uh, you know, a, a wide uh, variety of music, and I've seen a bunch of them, like 10, 12, 
times. Like Springsteen, I've seen at, at least between 12 and 15 times. Seen Bon Jovi over 10 times. Uh, and all, I've seen Billy Joel about six or seven. Uh, you know, Rod Stewart, six or seven. Elton John, six or seven. You know, so, I, you know, we love, my wife and I, to go to concerts. We get a, a lot of enjoyment out of it. So we try to go to as many as we can. In fact, tonight, my staff and I, last year, we went to see Lionel Richie out here. Tonight, we're going to a tribute to the Bee Gees. So we're going over to Excalibur tonight, and we're going to see a, a band a band from Australia that is uh, playing BG music so you know I go to a wide variety of music and so we're excited about that even though we're coming off two losses we're gonna try to make the best of it tonight what would you say is the uh, hottest ticket that you've ever gone to concert wise the hottest ticket I would probably say Springsteen you know uh, well no I'm gonna tell you what this summer the U2 ticket uh, in, in uh, MetLife was very expensive so that was a pretty hot ticket but probably on the most part at Springsteen. I was going to try to see Springsteen on Broadway, but the amount of money that they wanted for those tickets were, was out of control, so I, I, di I didn't want to pay that kind of money. Coach McBreen doesn't know this, but I actually also was at the U2 show at MetLife. We just didn't run into each other that day. What would be the one show that you would surprise the most people that you've actually gone to see? What act? I would probably say somebody like Barry Manilow. I've seen Barry Manilow three times with my wife. We enjoyed it. Uh, and all and I think people would surprise how I go from like the who the Rolling Stones Bruce Springsteen Bon Jovi Billy Joel and then end up going to see somebody like uh, Barry Manilow so I have a wide range of music that I enjoy uh, from back from my growing up days and at the end of the day that's the kind of music we like to go see I appreciate coach McBurney having a little fun with us at the end of what is had to be a frustrating trip for the Roadrunners as they leave Las Vegas with a record of 0-2. We'll see how the ranking changes for Ramapo when the new poll comes out next week. But thanks to Coach McBreen, just two Jersey guys right here in Las Vegas.